In this lecture, we're going to talk a little bit about the idea of variability or spread in data sets. In the previous uh, videos, we talked about a measure of center. But sometimes a measure of center isn't enough to really differentiate between two data sets. So let me give you an example. So let's take this first data set and this second data set here. So maybe pause the video now and as a little exercise, calculate both the mean and the median of each data set. It shouldn't take you very long. You might be able to eyeball it yourself. But pause the video and see if you can figure those out. Okay, hopefully you've seen that the mean of this data set is zero, and you can kind of see that for every negative uh, element there's an associated positive element, so everything's going to cancel. And zero is in the middle too, so it's the median. Same with this one. Zero is both the mean and the median. So these data sets, if you were just given one number, a measure of center, you could either use the mean or the median, or both almost, and it wouldn't be enough to differentiate both data sets. But looking at this data set, you can see that the right-hand data set is more spread out than the left-hand data set. If you, were to, if you were to graph these on a number line, let's just do something very quick and dirty. So data set, the first data set, the left-hand one I'll do in blue. So that's going to look something like this. Whereas the right-hand data set, which I'll do in green, is going to look something like this. It's more spread out on the number line. And we want another number to capture this. So we have to come up with some good ways of talking about how spread out the data is. So one measure of spread, and you've probably learned this in school, is the range. So one measure of spread is the range. And that's just the highest data point or the largest data point minus the lowest data point or the smallest data point. So let's call this data set data set A, and this will be data set B. And we can talk about the mean and median of data set A and the mean and median of B, data set B. Well. Let's calculate the range of A. Well, that's going to be the largest element, which is 3, minus the smallest element, which is negative 3, and that's 6. And that's saying that the distance between the largest and smallest data point in our set is 6. And the range for B is 15, our largest data point, minus our smallest data point, minus 15, which is 30. So that's saying that the distance between the largest and smallest element in our data set is indeed 30. And this is a pretty quick and dirty measure. However, range is really affected by outliers. It doesn't capture at all what's going on in the middle of a data set. So we need something that's a little more precise. So that's what we're going to discuss on the next slide. So one other measure of spread we can talk about, and this one kind of includes all data points in two ways almost, and we have to be careful here. It's called the standard deviation. And the best way to think about it is it's some sort of average distance from the mean. And we have to be a little bit careful when we talk about distance. When we're talking about distance, we want to make sure that we're kind of including, say, the distance. We know that the mean is 0 here, so this is the mean. And we know the distance from 0 to 1, that's 1. But we also want the distance from 0 to negative 1, which is also 1, to be included in the same distance. So we don't want kind of direction to be important here. So we have to be a little bit careful. We have to make sure everything's positive. So you could think, well, let's just take each point and figure out the distance from the mean. So we'll go x1 minus the mean 
And because we don't care about distance, you could say, well, let's just take the absolute value. So if it's a negative, it becomes positive. And do that for all seven data points. Find the distance from each point to the mean. And keep going. And then find the average of it. So divide by seven. And in some sense, that's roughly the idea. But for mathematical purposes, we're going to treat distance a little bit differently. Rather than taking the absolute value of these distances, what we're going to do is we're going to square these distances. So remember, this is the distance between x1 and the mean. To find the distance between things, you just subtract them. So for mathematical purposes, rather than taking the absolute value, we're going to square these. And it's a little technical, so I don't want to get into it too much. But for those of you watching this that know a little bit of calculus, it turns out that absolute value functions are very messy to deal with. They're not differentiable at kind of zero, or at this case, if x1 actually equaled um, the mean. They're not differentiable. So you have to kind of look at things in separate cases, and it just becomes really messy and ugly. Whereas, um, Quadratics are nice. They, they behave nice and continuously. But don't worry about that if you don't understand what I was saying. That's just for people who've taken a little bit of calculus and know what's happening. So we're not going to do this, although this is a measure. This, in fact, is called the mean absolute deviation. We won't use that, though. We'll use something called the standard deviation. And so this asterisk up here that I put by distance... I mean the squared distance, then take the root, take the square root of the average. So we'll write this down. And there's another technical point I'm going to have to mention, but that's okay. I'll mention it when we get there. And we use the symbol S to refer to a sample standard deviation. So I'm going to write it longhand, and then I can write it in a little shorter notation. So this is going to be x1 minus the mean. Figure out what that distance is. Square it to make sure everything's positive. Do that for every data point that you have. x2, square it. If you have n data points, go all the way up to xn. Square it. Then... We're going to divide by, I'm going to write n minus 1. I'll explain this in a second. We're not dividing by n. We're dividing by n minus 1. And then once we do that, once we find the average squared distance, to get back in the same units that we started with, we take the square root of everything involved. And the reason that we take this n minus 1, this is for kind of technical reasons, we're dividing by n minus 1 instead of n, since we're using a, and I'll put this in quotes, degree of freedom. I don't want to go into too much detail of what that means. To find the mean. So in some sense, we're treating the mean like something we know, like a data point. So there's only n minus 1 data points that we're really using because we had to, in some sense, use one of them to calculate the mean. But don't worry about that. Just know our formula looks like this. Also, there's a population standard deviation. So this is a sample standard deviation. Maybe I'll make a note. And the population standard deviation, I'm not going to write down the formula for it. It's basically the same, and we won't calculate it by hand very much at all. But this is the population standard deviation here. So, it's a symbol called little sigma. So it's a Greek letter, little sigma, and that is the population standard deviation. Again, we usually don't know um, population standard deviations, just, don't, just like we don't know population means. 
So we have to estimate it using samples, and that's going to be the overarching idea for this course. So let's do an example just to make sure we understand what's going on. All right, let's look at the standard deviation of these two data sets. So let's go ahead. So remember, we need to figure out the mean first, but we know the mean. We've calculated this previously. We know the mean is 0. So the standard deviation is going to be the square root of the square distances from the mean, and then divided by n minus 1. So here we're going to get negative 3 minus 0 squared. So that's the first data point, the distance from the first data point to the mean, and then square it. Let's do the next one, minus 2 minus 0 squared, plus negative 1 minus 0 squared, plus 0 minus 0 squared, and we have 3 more. 1 minus 0 squared, plus 2 minus 0 squared, plus 3 minus 0 squared. So we figure out all those squared distances. We divide by n minus 1. There's 7 data points here, so we're going to divide by 6. And then we're going to take the square root. So let's write this down. So this is going to be 9. So Negative 3 squared is 9, negative 2 squared is 4, negative 1 squared is 1, then we get 0. Similarly, 1, 4, and 9, and that's over 6. So what do we have here? We have 14 plus another 14 is 28. So this is square root 28 over 6, which is approximately, if you put that in your calculator, 2.16, the two decimal places. So we'll call that the standard deviation of data set A. Standard deviation of data set B, now that you have an example, maybe pause the video, try it yourself. See if you get the same answer that I do. Okay, so let's do this. Same idea. I'm not going to write down as much since it's the same thing. But we know the mean is 0, so this is the mean of A, and it's the mean of B is 0. So we just do the same thing, 15 minus 0 squared. We do that for all seven data points. I'll just put in the first and the last. Hopefully, the ellipses there are clear of what I'm doing. I'm just doing the exact same thing that I did in this example with these data points, but with these data points instead, and I'm going to divide by 6, and you should get the square root of 700 over 6, which is approximately 10.80. And if units are the same and everything else is, uh, is the same, let me put approximately equals here. This data set has a larger standard deviation than this one. So we can say data set B is more spread out than data set A. And that's the key thing to remember. When you have data sets that are in the same units and roughly measuring the same thing, the larger the standard deviation is, then the more spread out the data. So that's what you're thinking of here. This is a measure of spread. You can think of it on average in some sense. Um, the average distance from any data point to the mean in data set A is around 2.16 units. And the average distance from any uh, data point in data set B to the mean is around 10.8 units. And as a final uh, thing, I just want to tell you that the variance, sometimes you just want to think about the average squared distance by itself without taking that square root. And that's just, for a sample, it's s squared 
So just take the standard deviation and square it. And for a population, the variance is just sigma squared. And you're thinking of this, these are definitely average squared distance without taking that square root.